contradictions in the Bible, what God revealed to me about the Sabbath. Walk up to me or I walk to you and we could both talk all about the truth. Okay, so here's the alleged contradiction. Exodus 28. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Versus Romans 14, 5. One person esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. It seems to me that people like to isolate a verse here and a verse here and examine them without going back to the source. The Bible is one complete book, meant to be understood and applied cover to cover. The Old Testament is Jesus concealed. The New Testament is Jesus revealed. Okay, so we've read the two verses that allegedly contradict each other. What else does the word have to say about it? In Genesis 2, we read that God rested on the seventh day of creation. This was the introduction to the principle of the Sabbath day rest. When the Old Testament law was given, they were told to remember it and to keep it holy, as we just read in Exodus 28. This was so for one day a week, they would have physical rest from their work and from all their laboring. Or as Leviticus 23.3 says, the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation or assembly, a call to gather together to remember the Lord and what he's done. And in that remembering, comes the spiritual relief and restoration that the Lord provides. This was its intent, but the Pharisees set up an overcomplicated, hard to follow law system with 39 categories of forbidden activities to do on the Sabbath. That's a lot of rules. So in a sense, the Pharisees had made themselves rulers or lords of the Sabbath. In three of the Gospels, we encounter the account of Jesus with his disciples and his disciples plucking grain and eating it on the Sabbath. The Pharisees catch them. And this can be found in Matthew 12, 1 through 8, Mark 2, 23 through 28, Luke 6, 1 through 5. In all three accounts, Jesus puts the Pharisees in their place and frees his people of the weight of all those additional rules with one sentence. Matthew 12, 8, For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Luke 6, 5, The Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Mark 2, 27, And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> Hope I didn't break it. You know, even today, we can get caught up in our religiousness and miss Jesus miss our rest. Matthew 5 17 and this is Jesus speaking. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. Strong's lexicon identifies this word fulfill as meaning satisfy, execute, finish, verify. So if Jesus came to fulfill the law, how does this apply to the Sabbath? Could it be that Jesus is the Fulfillment of the Sabbath rest? <laughs> Remember, the Sabbath day was designed to give the people physical rest from their work, but also rest from their laboring, their laboring to be acceptable to God with constant offerings. Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross, his blood on the mercy seat, his resurrection once and for all reconciled us with the Father. Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of the law, the ultimate Sabbath rest so that we can rest from all our laborings. We are accepted because of Jesus. Colossians 1 19 through 23. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him whether things on earth or things in heaven having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard. When we give our hearts to Jesus and allow him to live inside of us, the Father looks at us and sees Jesus, his Son, 
his perfect son. Hebrews 10, 14, for by one offering, he has forever perfected those who are being sanctified. Perfected because it's already done because of Jesus' finished work on the cross. A third of us will not change when we get to heaven. We're still being sanctified or perfected because our soul needs to be purified and line up with our spirit. The Lord God established and operates in the system of seed plant harvest. In the garden in Genesis, the Lord says, give me that one tree and the rest are yours and it will be fruitful for you. In Old Testament law, the Lord says, set apart this one day and the rest will be fruitful for you. In the New Testament, we read Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When we understand that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law, that he is our Sabbath rest, we can go back and read Exodus 28 with New Testament eyes and understanding. We are no longer weighed down by the laborings of corrupted religion, but rather we look to the Lord for all things, including our rest. If we read on past Romans 14, 5, we understand the context of this too. Everything you do, do with conviction as unto the Lord, but don't get caught up in what man thinks. Continue going to the Lord. Remember him. Isaiah 30, 15 says, In returning and rest, you will be saved. Jesus is our rest. That's why he wants us to remember him, return to him, keep returning to him. He is what we need. You know, it's interesting. The kingdom works sometimes opposite of the way our natural world works. We think that more effort and laborings produce the fruit, but really it's our resting in him and remembering to go back to him. You know, I recently cried out to the Lord, help me rest in you. And you know what he said back to me? He responded, watch and see what I will do. You see, it's the fact that I desire to rest in him that enables him to work through me, to touch lives through me, because it's all him. It's all about him. We're just a vessel. We can live in that place of rest and peace so long as we remember him, go back to him. So now when you go back and read Exodus 28 with understanding that the Lord is our Sabbath rest, that Jesus is our Sabbath, you can hear him say, remember me, honor me, I am the Lord sabbath i am the fulfillment of the law i am your rest he's good he can't lie his word's true there's no contradiction here until next time if you if you want to talk about love or you want to talk about peace then please buy some conversation with me